Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Caesar Southern Indiana and the 24th Annual Derby City Classic. We got a packed house all around me here in the AccuStats Arena, and let me ask you guys, are you ready for this next match? If you're not excited about this next match, something's wrong with you. This is the Diamond Bigfoot 10 Ball Challenge. We started with 16 of the greatest players on the planet. We're down to eight, and after today, we'll have our final four. This next matchup features two past champions, and it's time to meet them. Here we go. First up, two-time International Open champion, nine-time Turning Stone champion, and seven-time member of Team Europe with two Moscone Cup MVPs, and also three-time Bigfoot Challenge champion. Sponsored by Kamui, Predator, Rasson, Perry Cues, and Pool Shark Billiards. From Glasgow, Scotland, make some noise for the Eagle Eye, Jason Shaw. And his opponent is five-time U.S. Open champion, the reigning world champion, and 16-time member of Team USA. Sponsored by Q-Tech, Rasson Billiards, and VNEA Pool League from Sioux Falls, South Dakota, USA. He's a South Dakota kid, Shane Van Boning. Our referee is Ricky Bryant, sending it up to the skybox. Hello and welcome, pool fans from around the globe. World Class 10 Balls up now with Van Boning and Shaw. The match that we've all been looking forward to. Next to me is Jeremy Jones and I'm Mark Wilson. Jeremy, let's hear your opening thoughts. Well, there's been a lot of matches between these two guys. Uh, seems like, of course, the packed house because it's always something special, it seems like. Uh, Shaw, who's dominated this 10-foot over the years, and Shane, who's had some wins as well. They played recently in a huge match in the Moscone Cup on day four not long ago. So, And big matches coming on for these guys in a heck of a year coming up, right? So how many times do you think they'll face each, each other <laughs> yeah, this year? Uh, all through the year. This is the first tournament of the year. And then the uh, Moscone Cup, they'll be against each other too. So. Yeah, yeah, right. And, and like I said, you know, th a lot of these matches, they're packed because of, they're big fans and whatnot. And this tournament is certainly come into its own the Bigfoot challenge but I think a lot of it's like I said you never know when you're going to see something just extra special and and that's what keeps these fans coming to see these great players look at that break the ball right behind the one drifted into the side pocket Shane squared him up nicely the one ball's right in front of him you have to hit him square to get that type of ball action and then with power let me see let me pull up my break demon and I'll just tell you I don't think it was way up there, 21 maybe, is I'm guessing. But like we talked about with uh, Fetter and then who else was it? They, you notice how he flies the cue ball pack past the side easily. That's huge. And not easy to do on the 10-foot table. All right, he's got to kind of creep the cue ball around to get some kind of shot on the two. Oh, wow, what a nice strike with the bridge and a little short side position to start the match. Beauty. Mark, I know that's the first shot, but it didn't look like, uh, you know, something on ESPN, but that might be the shot of the match right there. Yeah. Yeah. But, well, you know, in an interesting way, they were down here working on the table right before the match. They had the rails off it, pulled the cloth up by the side pocket, and Shane was here eagerly awaiting them to complete that. Then he practiced for an hour solely on this table. And Shaw came in about 15 minutes before the match. So Shane's taking this very serious. And when you said, you know, that uh, Shaw's dominated this, this, this is the 10th one between the two of them. They have five titles, three right. for Shaw, two for Shane Van Boning. Well, we talked about it yesterday. I don't think it was on the air, but I've been in contact with Shane a bit. And a couple of times he was out on the lake, and we all know a certain time of the year he likes to get his fishing in. And... You know, I know he probably feels like he needs a little of that practice, that extra practice right now. But I think, uh, you know, we talked about the first round, Mark and I did on, of course, it was obvious it didn't take a genius to see that Fetter Gorse was the most impressive in the first round. But I thought Shane was just a step away from maybe playing a real good match and or maybe just a real good lot of matches. We'll see. Well, that was a really nice shot there to control the speed and the angle. You can see he's dialed in. 
Yeah, well, the first shot with the bridge, um, I know it sounds crazy, but those shots will get you a lot of confidence one way or another. And you got to like the way you hit the break. Uh, sometimes that'll tell you a lot about Shane Van Boning as well. That's the backswing that uh, I like seeing from Shane right there. I talked to him right when we got in town. I told him I watched a match of his. I think the only Euro Tour he's ever played, he won it there in Eindhoven against Kachi in the final. Incredible match. But I watched it twice last week. Or maybe it was 10 days ago or whatever. And I never saw his backswing so so good mm -hmm. than, than right then. And that time frame, he, it was incredible as well. So I told him, I said, go watch that match. <laughs> I said, you're going to like it. Right. A very clean break and run out there to open the match. Well, we're off and running. Shane running out the first rack and leads it 1-0. Yeah, Eagle Eye, who started off in the lead in points now with a turning stone win. Another one, number nine, I think it was. Hill Hill over Skywood. They may have to change the name of that to the uh, Jason Shaw benefit. Yeah, right. You know, when you go about winning a pool match, and especially when it's super competitive like this one figures to be on paper, the way you go about it is you go out there and set the tone right from the lag. You win the lag, you make a good break, and then if you can support it with a break and run out, you got about three or four things of momentum on your side, and you've got the initial rack jitters out of the way. Sure. You've got, you know, the speed of the table feeling good. And it wasn't like he stumbled through the rack. It was three or four really clean shots and uh, a lot of precision to open the match. Four ball, that's the one that I, s ooh, he missed it on the four rail. He did get the eight down. Now this ball banks. We'll see how aggressive he wants to be going cross corner. I think the one five's a little funny. He's got to cut it back just a shade. And then it's not easy to get the cue ball in position because you're going to have to pinch this a little bit. I don't think you can just stun it forward on the bank, do you? I think he might rip draw it one rail cross is the way it lays to me. Not rip it like big time, but, you know, quite a bit of speed. I think he'll roll up and just play safe and just cinch it down there. I don't think he's looking to take a big chance early. Well, I was wrong. Yeah, I mean, it's hard for those guys when the bank lays right in their face. It's like the long railer after that, you know, after they break sometimes, the long railer just sits real nice. For these top players, it's just hard for them to pass on it. All right, this one's thin. I don't know if he can hit it thin enough and get the cue ball back up. Maybe he can. Okay, he did. He, he could got, do a lot with yeah, it. Yeah, he got a lot more of than it. we thought. I, was I thinking thought he, he had to shave it. You know? I did, too. I was thinking he was in the same predicament that that one ball wasn't going to move much and he was going to have trouble getting position. But he could still defend himself, of course, as long as he pockets the ball. Nice shot there. Well, not this past international, but uh, I guess that would be 2021's international. Shane played some incredible pull on the 10-footer. Albin played just a little better, of course, to win the title, but... Shane was pretty special that week, I thought. Regarding the Fargo ratings, uh, Shane's number one. I think Gorse might be tied with him, 836. Shane was just a tick behind. I think he was, when I looked this morning, I think like 811 or 817. Well, this tournament, <clears throat> the Bigfoot, of course, the, the rest of the events mean a lot to this guy, too, because it's time at the table. But right after this event, these guys go to Poland for the World Nine Ball. And he's going to try and defend that title. And uh, that's going to be some motivation for Shane, I believe. I think he's going to be playing pretty darn hard out there in Poland. All right, he's going to have to draw underneath, it looks like. No reason to play the rail first right here, I don't think. No, he'd rather draw in the. Though four balls an inch from the rail as opposed to less than that when the rail first plays. Much nicer when it's real close to the rail. Well, he's got two pockets for the six. He's landed to where neither of them are like perfect, or like super easy, but both of them are very playable. Should be the corner. I 
you and I, again, I think it was us that talked about, you know, years ago with Shane, um, he could get a little, you know, I, negative's not the right word, but maybe a little uh, hard on himself, um, you know, whenever he didn't mm -hmm. play the right kind of match he wanted. And mm -hmm. I think he's a lot better these days. Uh, it's easier for him to, you know, like I said, become a little more humble about a loss or or understand the loss or take the loss, whatever you want to call it. I do. I agree completely. I, yeah. I've noticed that he's softened just a little bit, not in terms of his competitive desire, but his capacity to rebound because he used to get a little bit down and hard and negative and maybe even a little contentious at times. Yeah, and, you know, what I used to always tell him, which, you know, during Moscone or any time, really, has a two -game I'm lead always in. trying He'll to tell these guys something positive, to rack three. is forget about that one mistake you know it's almost like he used to play looking to where if that one mistake he'd get real down behind it like oh i lost the match now i made that one easy mistake or whatever yeah. it was and it's almost that kind of mentality now from match to match and tournament to tournament and like you said he hasn't lost the the will to win so i think it's a good thing for shane you see him smile before the match you never oh, used yeah. to see any yeah. of that and uh, nothing to take it away but i've watched his career since the very beginning and I remember his very first TV uh, match on ESPN, and I happened to be broadcasting it. And I said, man, a young guy like you win a title like this, how's, how do you celebrate? And I was thinking he was going to say, I'm going to take that trophy and fill it with champagne. Mm -hmm. And he said he was going over to uh, the pool room. Yeah. At, you know, the Q Club. And yeah, right. Because he's comfortable there. And hitting yeah. balls, that's, his, like, that's where he's comfortable. And, yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, things considered – Hard to look through anyone's eyes or whatever, but you know, with the handicap, probably grew up a little more by himself at times, and so I was kind of introvert myself. Stick to myself a lot, go to the pool room, practice by yourself, whatnot. But I think it's just a little different SVB the last few years. Makes him tougher. Whoa, whoa. Yeah, and that's kind of like that mistake that may get him down. We'll see if he can leave that behind. He was trying to thread the cue ball. I thought he would stay on the high side of the six rather than risk getting in there. But I don't know if he could check it that much. So he just decided to try and, you know, just float into position, just got away from him a little bit. Well, this was a much-needed opportunity for Shaw here. You don't want to fall behind early and get a, a big deficit. This will be an interesting shot. This is one of those in-betweens, kind of a stun with a little bit of side spin as opposed to full-on effective top spin or center ball. Yeah, and it's, you know, some guys put a hair stun. Some guys use a hair more tip position to roll the ball. It's just kind of how you like to play it. If I'm comfortable, I usually, like a shot like that, I'll just use a hair more tip position to grab a little bit and float across. just depends on how you play. If you're the type of player that really uses the bed a mm. lot, you know, you can really play either, really, a light stun, like a like a filler maybe, or, or someone that uses a hair more uh, tip position. All right, one rail down for the side, it looks like. I don't know if the seven passes the nine. Maybe two rails down for the side. I think one-ish. Uh-oh. Look out, point. catches the point. That could be problems. And did you see a hair of a let-up, maybe? Just kind of like he didn't get through the ball quite as much as he normally does. He does that quite a bit. Yeah. So uh, kind of inherit with his. This is funny. If he's got to go into the 10, that ball near the spot, just like the ball in the middle of the table, causes a lot of scratches. Yeah, he causes a lot of maybe fluke in the 10 as well, but. And you notice how firm he hit that, and I don't think you would normally see that. And besides him, a little worried about going into the ten, he didn't mm -hmm. know what was going to happen. So that sometimes makes you hit the shot a little harder. Yeah, within a whisker, of making the ten ball accidentally there. Oh, Shane can leave that mistake behind now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> looks like a line drive in the box score. Yeah, and that kind of shot, he didn't hit it. You know, terrible or nothing. He just overhit that shot he scratched on. The, the, the ball hit the center of the pocket. Yeah, quickly, Van Boning three, Shaw zero. 
And after three games, Van Boning right Van along Boning a little 960 clip none, on the TPA. Shaw, the Eagle Eye will have the break. It would be a thousand besides oh. that scratch. You know, there might be somebody that's as hardworking in pool as Shane Van Boning on their game, but there's nobody harder working than Shane Van Boning. Yeah. yeah. It, that's impossible. You maybe could tie him. Maybe. Not likely, but maybe. Yeah, when he's in he's in play mode, you know, work mode, you're definitely going to see him put in a lot of time. And the thing is, if you do it right, you learn to love it, right? I mean, it's not it doesn't feel like the practice doesn't feel like as much work. I mean, some days it'll feel a little bit more like work. But, I mean, you got to treat it like work, of course, but you can learn to enjoy it. That's for sure. You're never going to be great if you don't enjoy it. There's, there's no hope. Yeah. Yeah, there's zero hope. You have to have the passion. Yeah. But the thing is, to me, when guys like, oh, I just don't like to practice, right, that much. And then there's some great players through the years that you would believe did not practice that much. Uh, another bank that he could kind of draw to the rail and back out. You know, crucial game here. So it's an off-angle bank. So he's going to pull them behind the eight. Ooh, a little light. No? The one, yeah. Pretty fortunate to get behind the seven there. I don't think he hit it quite like he wanted, but yeah. Well, um, just to go back to what you said, the guys that don't love to practice are no longer here. Yeah, right. Because well, you're not going to hang with these guys if you. Well, don't love I know, to but I mean, like, there's still guys that do that. They just have to learn that hey, you can't hang out. <laughs> you know, like uh, Skyler, for instance. Not saying he didn't practice, but his regimen is a lot more now. Exactly. Um, uh, you're going to figure it out that you have to practice. But what I was getting at is what a lot of guys do is they never really put in the maximum effort on the practice. Mm -hmm. And until you do that, you're never really going to like it that much. You know, once you start to put in the maximum effort on the right. practice is when you start to appreciate it and really fall in love with it. If you just sit there and hit a few balls, yeah, everyone's going to get bored, myself included. I'm not sure why that is, but that's that's pretty rings pretty true in most sports. It's got to be full go. Maybe even journaling some of your results keeps you engaged too, or, or yeah. uh, challenges. It's got to be fresh, fun, and challenging that that part. And but you got to be looking forward to it. Well, and that's the difference. Um, you know, you watch players sometimes, especially the pros more than the amateurs, of course, and they'll make a ball. And they'll get decent position or whatever, and you'll see some pros. I was like this, shaking their head a little bit at times, and amateurs would be like, why are you shaking your head? And it's not so much you cared about the position. It was the way you hit the ball that you didn't like for one reason or another. And it's kind of the same thing with practicing. Look at this little bump on the 7. What a nice shot that was to open up the 7-8. But it's kind of like practicing. You can't just be satisfied with the ball going in. It's how you struck the ball you know was it wasn't really how you wanted mm -hmm. and that's when you really start to get fine-tuned really nice ooh a little thick there <laughs> a little careless there and well, that I, that one singular pocket right there it happens to be the tightest pocket on the table we measure them all and that one was a uh, 16th smaller oh. than the other ones yeah you said that yesterday and i forgot i meant to ask you once you brought up the you know, the workings on the table earlier today, was there a particular reason why? I, I didn't get it. There okay. was a whole crew of guys with screws and stuff, and they had a long stick. They had the cloth off, and uh, yeah. then they put it back together. So something they mm. wanted to relevel or something. I don't know. Because it seemed like it was playing very level yesterday. But Funny little angle here now. Oh, he got a lot out of it. Oh, boy. Oh, Look at that power to get that much. It just trickled out, and he hit it in the you know, warp speed. Yeah, and if we get, well, maybe get a replay on that nine. But if you see where the nine entered the pocket for him just to get what he did get out of it, he cut the nine way to the right yeah, side of the pocket. Yeah, quick out there yeah. from Shaw. And he's on the board now, trailing by Shaw two. Shaw on the board now. Shane Three Van Boning will have the break. SVB to break. We have the best fans in the world. I know Kathy Jo Sawyer listening in down in Waco. Uh... Here on the premises, we got Tim Ralph and his wife, which is pretty cool people. Yeah, they're from Columbia, Missouri. Yep. Yeah, I met them yeah. the other day, as a matter Complete of fact. Respect. Really nice people. They showed me their little pool room at home. I saw it. Yeah, it looks cool. Wow, looks like uh, looks like something off of like uh, 
What's the show where they travel looking around for all the unique things? Oh, yeah. Things, uh, what is that? Uh, with Mike, Antique Mike and Frank. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Mike Wolf. And Frank, whatever the guy's Frank. Yeah. yeah. What's the name? I, wa- uh, I watched it all the time. But anyways, I'll think of it in a minute. Not American pa- something, right? American yeah, archaeologist. They, they, yeah, that's the name of their uh, antique ar- archaeologist is what it is. That's the name of their store. Uh-oh, he had a little top spin there. So not quite the hit on the cue ball that he wanted to get the two down. <laughs> he just hits them so square every time. Okay, so this is going to be difficult. Boy, you're not kidding. Yeah, well, the thing is, he can roll out to a kick, but the the kick to the, mm-hmm. to the top rail, Jason's going to take that kick shot. It's not that hard to kick and stick maybe behind the nine. We'll see. Here you've been successful on the break, and then yet you're facing a deficit. Yeah, it's part of it, ain't it? Good. He's got a little bit of things that are helping him. I'm not sure if the five six plays or not, but the five's kind of tough. Now this is an important kick shot. You know the ones coming down here towards all that congestion. So if you don't get the snooker, you're probably going to take the worst of it in the next inning. Mm-hmm. But he's so good at these, like all the guys. Like Look that. how good that shot was right there. Wow. Well, the <laughs> kick and stick. The funny thing is, the top, the, the new felt will almost teach you how to hit those better. You know, you just hit them a little cleaner, not so hard. Yeah. And you kind of figure out the, the path. And a lot of times, that's straight high from that angle. There's no right English. What do you do here, Mark? Well, <clears throat> it's hard to tell with the nine, but it looks like he's looking at like he has to float it in there, which means. Much harder to hit, much smaller target. You'd like to get cleaned by the the nine ball. Look at this. Now he's, this is so it. This is the only way he off. has. Yeah. I think he hits it if he gets it uh, spread on him a little bit. Wow. All right. Well, for for uh, shoot the one seven. The here? other choice he had there is maybe try to tie something up. Maybe you know, yeah, because but he stuck to the nine. Only shot two balls he could hit was the nine and the four. I was thinking, would I maybe try to move the four, like cut it off the left side, move it up the rail a little bit? Mm-hmm. I like the one mm-hmm. seven here, though, because that opens up the five. Awkward stretch for the lefty. And the seven's just a hair off angle. So if he shot the one seven, he'd have to shoot it with a little speed to move the cue ball to the bottom rail and then back up a little bit. Yeah, it makes you know position play on the one after you make the combination a lot trickier, and then you want to be able to easily get on the three. He's gonna say, "Look at this shot he's trying." So that doesn't mind the cut on the on the three ball though. Just to develop that problem down the road. Yeah. And even though this is thin, I mean it. You know, these guys remind themselves that it's not that tough, right? Yeah. Watch out, 8-Ball. Doesn't want any collision there. Nice shot. Real good. Came in on the high side of the 8 and dropped around it. This is a little goofy. A little straight. Yeah, he's just going to try and... He's not going to use the rail first. He's just going to try and squeeze as much as he can out of the cue ball. Oh, he drew it. Nice shot. Thought he might stun up the rail a little bit. Super good shot. You had to really manipulate the pocket to make it look natural like that. You can't just whack it in there. Now, of course, like anyone that's looking for the all-around here at the Derby, they got, have to have a pretty good start in the banks. Um, but if Jason happens to do that, which he's very capable, he's a great banker of the ball, like most nine ball players are, the great ones. Um, he's an outside fa- outside kind of guy. He's got a chance in the all around. Because I've seen him play one pocket. I mean, he doesn't have, you know, 25 years of experience playing it, but he plays it very well. <laughs> oh, yeah, he's a dangerous guy on any game. Yeah. Of course, Shane Van Boning, who's definitely one of the guys that uh, is going to have a chance for that all-around banner. We'll see Federer Gorse, probably the favorite for the all-around, I would say. We'll see him in the next match. Oh, speed. How's the speed a little strong, isn't it? Just a hair, though. Yeah. 
It's almost like the cue ball's a magnet, or excuse me, the rail's a magnet for the cue ball. Really nice. Beautiful. 3-2. Matt just traveling along here just about the way we figured it would go. It's going to be close. Two in a row for Shaw. We got a yeah, they're starting to run a little deeper in the banks now, maybe. Just six, guessing Jason seventh Shaw round coming up, break. something like that. Sixth round, maybe. I think seventh, but they did start the one pocket today at one o'clock. And I've heard nothing but uh, good reports about the tighter pockets uh, from the players. And not just the top players, even the guys maybe a tier two down. They really appreciate uh, what the changes they've made here at the Derby equipment wise. I think we're going to see some longer races to three because of it at times, you know, with the one pocket, yeah. but you know, that's part of it. Both players at 893 on their total performance average. As we enter game number six. And Shaw, he can hit him pretty firm, but he's a little more of a, not controlled break, but just something he doesn't go at it quite as much as most of the guys. More of an arm break. The cue ball almost dunked into the side. So he didn't hit him, that's why he didn't get the ball action that Shane was getting. Yeah. He had spin on the cue ball, he missed the connection on the head ball. And he didn't take as much time down on the ball opening the rack like he normally does. Now, we talked about he doesn't pause at the cue ball, but he usually, you know, takes a little more dead aim, you might call it. I know I didn't get in any hurry when I was down on the balls to break the balls. I wanted to make sure I was, you, oh, know, yeah. you know, lined up how I liked, felt how I liked. Yeah, you learn that as you go along about the accuracy. Accuracy trumps power in breaking. And so when you watch these guys, like watch Shane, how much carry he puts into his aim setting up on the ball for the break. Yeah. This may get a gap between the 5-6. We'll see what Shane's face is. Yeah, kind of walked away like, that well, looks pretty tight actually between the 5-6. But this is where, you know, Jason... Uh, Pretty savvy kicking at the ball, especially when there's a lot of balls out there percentage-wise trying to get some kind of snooker. So here, if you cut it a lot with spin, you'll go the side rail and back up on the 5-6. Uh, if you catch it full, well, that's a little too light there. He's not going to like well, that. Well, I think he had to arc it around. I don't think he had a clear yeah. path. That's why, yeah, he didn't want to go that speed knowing that there would not be a great deal of separation. Well, if he had to go that speed because of the arcing, I think I might have tried to find another path, maybe two rails off the side rail in between the three sevens, something like that. Now Shane's going to hand me mine right here, right? Just a safe, oh, yeah. just stun, uh, trickle in there. Uh, not what he wanted exactly. It definitely tied up the five a bit, and I don't know if he got the snooker. And notice how the cue ball kind of followed kind of quickly off the one in yeah. those balls. and indicated that he hit the cue ball just a quarter tip too high. Yeah. That's all. Yeah, you always want to come in a little slower with those. Oh, what a hit. <laughs> oh, wow. What a hit. <laughs> it's going to surrender a shot, but still a nice hit. Second time in the row, he had the curve to get even get an impact on the object ball. Well, it's amazing. We I forget who it was yesterday that... You talk about the curve shot and still being able to get speed on it to try and get separation. That's what's so good. Now that he's got to go into the two here, Mark, that's kind of what it looks like, unless he wants to check the ball a little and go up and down. May introduce a little bit of left side spin. Okay. Slow rolling, so he's definitely not side spinning. He's just going to take what he can get and a tremendous result. And that ball hit the pocket so pure, and I think by not using the check the left side spin. He knew he could hit the ball pure. He thought that had the best percentage of outcome for him. So. Well, that type of shot, the thin hit at the super light speed, just rolling your ball. Maybe the best I've ever seen at it under pressure. Uh -huh. Shane, probably the best I've ever seen for sure, I think. Yeah. And he does it in a unique style, you know. Really a short takeaway usually and very short, if any, through impact. 
already concerned with the five ball, how he's going to play the five ball here late in the rack or mid rack. And really no pocket except for underneath, and I don't really see a great route off the four to get all the way back behind the five. A lot of funny traffic in the center of the table as well. And the righty ain't going to be able to reach this, or not easily. Mm, no, no. Even if you're a tall player, once it's a diamond past the side pocket, this almost you'd have to really stretch and to be ungainly. You'd never spin the ball from that. Yeah, maybe vertically, but not left and right, right? I mean, you you don't want to play a five nine billiard from this far away. Oh, that's no. that's impractical. But that looks like what the only shot that he has if he stays on that end of the table. I think it's got to be a safety, and it's it's one thing from that far away the cue ball, but. That type of billiard, uh, the nine that far away from the pocket, huh, that's where you're talking about the 10 foot. If it's a little closer, you have a little more room for error with that. I think he's just pushing through on the five, Mark. Had to be careful with that, bumping the eight. That was Got a around beauty. The eight. That was a beauty. How's his speed? Oh, Jason taps the table. He recognizes right away. That was a good shot. Yeah, well, the thing is just to see that uh, that it lays natural to do it, but that required a dead full hit on the five, no left or right of the five at all. He catches the 10 or the nine with the cue ball, and this shot turns into something maybe kind of ugly, right? And to do that with speed, that you have to have speed control on the object ball. We're all pretty good at speed control on the cue ball, but the, how thick or thin, and then estimating how far that ball travels. Well, that's a great return. Yeah, I don't think he can shave it <laughs> no. enough to with inside to go one rail behind the 10 and 6 and whatnot. This is really odd. And then that side pocket's a problem. Yeah. I mean, the thin side of things, I think he can do that, uh, get by the side. It's just like he's he's not going to be able to hit it thin enough to really get the English to take and get by the 6 and the 10. He's trying to grab this as much as he can, yeah, pull the cue ball back, hoping this didn't happen. The 5 got over a corner. And that was just getting all the ball he could and coming to the end rail with the cue ball and just taking his chances. Yep. Probably the best percentage, though, really. Well, there's no doubt. He factored all that in. He was just at risk, and this time it didn't pan out. Jason pointed into the stands a little bit. Yeah, he's talking to Stu Montana in the front row. It's <laughs> Jason, he's all relaxed. <laughs> Smiling. Well, even here, right, if you're not lefty, this is a funny stretch. Mm -hmm. So there's all kinds of positions, not just your normal positions you're used to uh, worrying about the getting at the ball. There's a lot of them on the 10-footer. Look at that nice shot. The thread in between the 8 and 9 after going three cushions with the right speed. Yeah, that's a totally world-class pool. Because it just looks natural. It looks like that's where it goes. That's not where it goes. You have to make it go there, then execute it, design it, think about it. So a couple things have gotten away from Shane. Some out of his control. Had a really nice safety there, but Jason with a nice solid hit on the five. Got a little reward, and now our match tied at three apiece. Straight a row from the Eagle Eyes. Mamboni, Great pool from both so far. Shooting clip. over at 900. So we head into rack and seven. Jason Shaw at a 909 Shane clip. Van Boning will have <laughs> the break. Tied 3-3. Three, three. Famous Beatles song, one after the 909. Mm. You don't know that because you're too young. Actually, I think I do. Grew up listening to eight tracks of the Beatles. I'm number five out of six kids. See? <laughs> so okay. my older brother and sisters a are, are a little older than me. And uh, my older brother was a big Beatles fan. Eight tracks, Mark. Yeah, that's going back there. Yep. I'll give you that. That's the pop he was looking for, just like he had in the first game. The last two breaks, he had a little more top on the ball. Didn't quite get that connection. 
the that, only player thus far regularly making that ball back in the side. Yeah. yeah the, everybody else has struggled with it. It's been intermittent and random if they ever did it. Chains did it just about every rack so far. Now, this is a slick table. I think he can, but just because he's so good at it, just kind of cutting it in lightly and trying to go one rail at the nine. Not hard. You have to do it lightly. I think it's going to spread too much. That, I think he has to if go he over two rails. It, that's why you got to hit it light so oh, it'll grab enough. You know call. what I mean? If good you hit call. over hit it a hair, it'll spread on you. Oh. And that's pretty unfortunate because he hit that ball clean. Really good call, though, Jeremy. Yeah, you said it exactly the way he had to hit it. If he has any speed at all, that expands. Yeah. And even then, this is tricky. Even if the nine ball wasn't there, it'd take a good shot. Yeah, you don't expect him to miss it if the nine's not there. I still like his chances of making it. And Shane's really good at that one ball shot, you know, that light one, uh, rolling the ball real light, just like the one he cut in off the end rail in the last rack, right? What oh, a beauty there. what a hit. He got too much out of the cue ball. You don't figure to go too far, but then it ended up in the side pocket, so... Well, one Good thing news. you can learn, you know, if you're not dead over the ball, you yeah. have a little room to stroke. If you can learn to commit when you're elevated, you seem to hit the ball better. And he was going to take his chances on overrunning the cue ball, making sure he committed on the strike of the two. You know how a lot of times, you know, you get a little like, oh, let me be accurate when yeah. I'm jacked up. Yes. And that's the least accurate. Yes. <laughs> the swing of your arm is the most accurate. So I see what you're saying. A little more pace lets yeah. that cue go travel a little Exactly, stronger. yeah. Yeah. And, and much akin to what players say, like, I like to let the shaft out type of thing where they get through the ball and longer swing, meaning a little more power gives them some accuracy. Yeah, it's uh, it's um, like a, with these guys anyways, they're so good. Um, when they get through at impact, uh, there's a good chance that things are going to be okay. Mm -hmm. All right, this is funny. The gap here, you know, he could draw between the 8 and 9 and fall on the end rail. That's the shot that looked like right here, like that. Boy, what a nice touch that was. Yeah, that wasn't, there was a lot of little question marks on that shot there. And I'll tell you what, uh, after a couple little things got away, big rack here if he can complete it to uh, get Shane kind of back on that killer instinct that we like to see. Yeah, as we're going to say, that ball kicked a little and. He doesn't want to roll this ball until that cue ball gets cleaned. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is that kind of cut that that uh, kick can happen or skid, whatever you call it, and then end up hitting it fat where the some of the chalk residue clings, oh. and then you hit it fat and hang it, and people think, "Well, he missed that." Yeah, at four three in the Moscone, he had a big kick on a six ball, and of course it was quite a bit thinner and. Um, not saying he's thinking of that, but <laughs> but he's aware that it yeah. can happen at that angle. Well, the pace he played to me, I don't think the kick had much chance. He played it with a nice aggressive pace right there. So, thought at first when he was having a cue ball clean, he was going to hit it lighter, but that didn't make sense anyways. He wouldn't be able to reach the ball. And a beautiful out here from Shane. Van Boney, the second break and run of the set. And Van Boney and takes his turn at the three. table with a break and run. And he leads once again four games Well, that's a distinguishing now. mark because these two, skill-wise on paper, it's, a, it's an equal match. So the only way to distinguish yourself in a set like this is to win some games where the opponent does not get to play. You can't gunfight with him every rack. And Van Boney's got two out of his four wins by virtue of break and run out. And I think as the event goes on, You'll see more of that between the guys. If you like the 10-footer, today's the day besides crowning a champion. Probably the best day of 10-foot pool just because you got guys that have won a match. you got four matches, of course. Tomorrow we have three, even though we will crown a champion. But today's probably the, you know, kind of like one of the better days for the 10-foot, right? Well, every say, day's a great day for 10-footers. Yeah. <laughs> but some real, you know, you get four really high-quality matches, of course. And guys, like I said, that have already won a match, so you figure them play pretty well. Again, Shaw's break let him down, and, and it can happen anyway, but it really happens if you slightly miss hit that head ball, and that's what happened here. The balls move, but they don't go to the pocket. Well, that's the sacrifice, uh, you know, or the difference in, in breaking abilities. Uh, the way the 10 ball is, that most of the players figure out a break that they can win with, but the problem is, 
when you don't have like Shane's break or Tyler's break, <clears throat> they can miss it the one a little bit and still get a ton of action on the balls. Yeah. You know, where if you're one of those guys that doesn't quite have that connection, you're a little more limited on, on your margin for error. Like Tyler and Shane, both of you, Sam, they'll miss hit the one, right, a little bit. And still fly the cue ball back past yeah. the side where all of us, if we miss hit the one, it ends up with a little top English and the cue ball seems to be going right towards the middle, one of the middle pockets. All right, he wants to figure out a way to come off the three, but it looks like to me the two rail angle off the four, he could certainly do something with going at the five, six. Maybe even short side on the five, six, Mark. I think he's flirting big time if he tries to play off the three to open anything. I think you're going to see him play off the four to maybe open or, like I said, short side on the five. Cross side bank ain't bad either on the five ball. Well, he's measuring it up right now. He's going to see just exactly what angle he gets. Being a little bit flat maybe helps too. You'll have to power it around, but that takes the eight ball out of play. Yeah. And so he's a little bit flat, meaning he's going to have to hit the four ball pretty thick. I think he played it thicker so he could play short side on the five. And that's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. not even go into the no, five, if you, six. Because yeah. if you get thin on the four, then it's a lot more sensitive on the speed. Here you got to thump it in there, and your speed control's better. Well, the good thing is if you really want to wing at it, right, and if you go past it not hitting it, it should spread open a couple more rails for the cross side bank on the five, like – Oh, this is not going to be what he wants. It's well, good, though. No. It's, it's good. At least uh, he can defend uh, it. Oh, gosh. Okay. He was trying to hit the six, maybe. Man, oh, man. That's and cool. that's the only problem with the thicker angle. You don't get quite as much natural speed, right? Right. And then the other part of it is it's when you have to thump it in there, you don't hit the pocket as clean. What a nice Beauty. hit that was. Beauty. He's hoping that just gets past the side. It oh, did. man, what a shot. It's almost like when you're breaking the rack open in street pool, you know, you don't want to be, or one pocket even or whatever, you don't want to be going in off of a thick hit very often. You want to be going in off a little thinner hit with a lot of rotation. It is so hard to defend yourself from that range where you've got to go end rail all the way back and then impact the five ball. And it's all yeah. calculated. It's not absolutely, he's going to put it there. Well, the, yeah. But he knows the percentages of doing that. Well, the thing about the long rail kick like that is... Uh, you're going to have the cue ball continuing downward if you can get that full hit. It's a harder hit. That's why guys stay away from it a lot of times if they have other options. But it does have some value, I think. Uh, oh, oh, I thought he was going to get a kiss there. Well, he did. <laughs> yeah. Just a different kiss than we were thinking. But So Shane has earned himself another turn, and that's the deal. you got to kind of draw gotta, onto this. Oh, I think he can follow through it, too. He can, and yeah. the seven so playable. The follow isn't bad. I kind of like drawing into it and staying a hair closer, moving the nine a little harder away, a little more full. Yeah, like that. That way you don't fall down quite so much, and you know the nine's getting out of the way, right? Right. Because if you follow, you're hitting a piece of the nine, and the cue ball's a little hotter than the nine boys, I think. But This is awkward, though, because the nine's down table, right? You He's have to straight. Be yeah, yeah, you have to be willing to work hard on these runouts right here because nothing's laying just perfect. Yeah, he tried to do a little bit more. He was <laughs> that same. That was the issue. It wasn't that he was missing. It was that he was playing to a part of the pocket to get the cue ball to trail away from the side rail. Yeah, and the reason why that is, Mark's explaining, because uh, he didn't want to get straight on the seven, having to work the cue ball from the eight to the nine, so... Kind of important to gain this angle. Yeah, at first glance with Shane, it looks like they're all open. It looks like he's just going to run out. But you can see the the angles, none of them lent themselves to running out. You're going to have to work through that run out. Now, this could be a pretty shot. And when you watch him, watch Jason Shaw midway. Now, he's going to really lock in on this visually. And then just as he gets halfway down bending over, you'll see those eyes flash down to the target. And then he'll settle into his final stance here. See, aiming, aiming, aiming. It's there, check. Yeah. Then he goes down right there at the end, that little oh, bit. He's oh, he's following. following. Okay. This is where that shot I was telling you about that I think he's the best at. Not really hit, overhitting it, still getting a lot out of it. Full ball, top English having to move the rock. Great shot. Yeah. Was it you and I talked about that? That 
I kind of started doing that after when I did practice a little bit. Yeah. That medium check, and I really liked it. And I asked Jason about it. Uh, kind of just said, the only thing I can figure is you're just kind of rechecking what you started with. And mm -hmm. he said, yep, that's it. Yeah, verifying, confirming, making sure it looks right. And you'll see him do it throughout the match. Oh, every shot, it, pretty it, much. It go, yeah, every mm -hmm. shot. And it goes to, uh, one, establishing good habits. Tied up two, again. Four games the apiece. eyes are super nine. important preliminary. On the actual delivery, if the, if you've lined up, you can close your eyes and make the ball. Because right. it's not a guided missile. You can't go left and right with a ball once it's on its way. But that extra energy, but most of us don't do it because it bleeds off that. It takes a lot of discipline, a lot of energy. And so we, we refrain from doing it, and especially when you get tired. You start to cut corners, and doom happens. Pool's too intricate. Well, the thing to me is it agrees with me the way I aim as well. Like, I aim a certain way to where I don't worry too much about it. Mm -hmm. You know, and, uh, and once I go down and I see the same thing, it makes me just even more confident that I'm okay. And, yeah. um, and then I kind of excuse aiming, to be honest with you. So. It's over with at that yeah. point. You know, good players, once they're down, they've already made the ball. You know, for the most part, they might not get the position. Look at Shane's ball action here late in the rack. You got to hit him square for that. Yeah, and he's got a super tough layout, though, with the three. The three's odd. That ball on the spot, that 10 ball, really makes a lot of issues <laughs> yeah. throughout yeah. Uh, a lot of games, it seems like. And that it denotes the very difference of 10 ball and 9 ball is that that one extra ball oftentimes somehow uh, encroaches on the natural path to get position. Well, there's, you know, you figure out after a while, man, those, they really knew what they were doing, putting that spot right there where that ball's at. And, the, <laughs> and then, you know, like you used to play golf and you'd see guys with the ball in the middle of the table. And you're like, why they do that? And then after you play it a while, you're like, oh, man, that's a big position place, that ball right. in the middle of the table. And, you know, it's just, uh, it just starts to make sense what's going on now. He's got to play a nice shot here off of a very small angle. Can't quite draw it back. Has to force it to go to the rail and over. He wanted to get, you know, where he's standing kind of now with the cue balls where he wanted. That way he could come, you know, two rails for the four. Can't really afford the other Can angle. you attack one rail at the eight, seven? Yeah, but you got to get in there tight, right? He's going to try and like. He's, yeah, that's what he was doing at the eight and the seven. And then they didn't have those. They didn't block him, so. He didn't get there, but that was what he was trying for. I'll tell you what he might do, though. The 4-5 is not terrible. I mean, it is a playable combination. You may have to go into the rail with the cue ball, but that's the only place he can easily get to He's, off the three. Uh, uh, let's not say easily get to. That's well, I mean. still uh, super uh, tough. No, no, no. It's doable. I mean, I mean yeah. that's his option to get to. Yeah. I mean, he can't get to the other side can, of the four. If so. we can grab the overhead real quick. So Jeremy's talking about playing it here and then having that cue ball, but you got to manufacture these angles to get down here. Yeah. And boy, that's a lot of a shot. He wants to stay aggressive. That's the thing. I mean, he can't quite cross corner it in, a, in any kind of free manner. And that combo is not easy because the five's up from the rail. I, mean, I think he should play safe. Here. Yeah, he's floating the three past the okay. seven eight and coming down. I think. Yeah. Oh, he played okay. it twice. He's Good. trying to come two rails. A little three-cushion billiard shot. Oh, there, boy, twice. what a world-class shot that was. To move both balls that accurately with that speed control. And that's the difference right there is the distinction. Yeah, and the thing is, of course, he had to execute it, but he picked out such a nice shot that had a lot of natural merit yeah. to it, right? There yeah. was a, some natural to be able to slide the ball two rails out of there, and yeah. it agreed with double banking the three. Now, even if Jason hits this, it's probably going to bump the five, and the, or the, I mean the four, and that's going to take care of a lot of problems here if Shane gets a, pro a shot from this. Nope. And what a great return that was. That now, medium speed. And look, it settles into the rail. Now the straight back bank. You can't even desperately go for the straight back bank very easily. Yeah. You may be forced to. But. Is he going to cut the three onto the four and run the cue ball? That's tough as well, but it has, you know, it's the type of shot Shane will play here a lot of times. you got to make a great hit here. Yeah, no English, just straight ball. I got away from him a little bit. Now this combo is treacherous. The billiard's a little easier, but your cue ball's not going to move much. And the three balls tracking away from the four, so you're gonna have to Absolutely. play down table and then come back for the four. So you know, if you're if you got some nerve, Efren I think plays the three into the rail. 
and then plays the five to where the three oh. comes up a little bit and the cue ball you don't have to hit it near as thin right so the cue ball doesn't right. have near as much speed it's more missable but it's way more winnable if you succeed yeah absolutely that was probably the smartest play yeah especially with really great ball control which is something you rarely practice that's all instinct and trusting what you're doing we're seeing the best decision making we've seen in the 10 ball event so far yeah a lot of nice exchanges he's got a little sliver but looks like uh he might even be able to go between the 10 six back up he's queuing up like he's playing this ball oh wow i didn't think he could see enough of it to make it no no he was playing safe you were right. He was skewing up like he was on the. <laughs> well, I don't know how. Avoid that 10 then. How well of a shot that was. I mean, it didn't come away like he wanted, but for him to get around the six off exactly. of that thin head, he had to apply just a hair of right English, and that was difficult. All right, shouldn't go all the way to the end rail here, just float two rails. Uh, he was trying to just go by behind the 7 8. Kit caught a little too thin. Okay, this is where the 10-footer, you know, you might play more of a, a, a leaving distance here, hitting the right side of the three, coming a couple rails around, trying to get maybe over the top of the five, put the three up on the side rail, and let Jason try to come with a shot. If you try to get cued here, you could leave a free bank cross corner or something like that. Oh, he got away. He got it away. Did he get it enough? No. Nope. Oh, maybe. Well, I think the yeah. he can cut it, but it's not going to be an easy shot, and it's certainly not going to be an easy position. It'll take a. I think Shane's shot was correct, though. I mean, he had a big seven eight. I know he it required a lot of skill that shot did controlling the object ball and the cue ball, but I like the shot. Well, there was nothing easier. That was the the less difficult of all the hard things he had to do there. So. Yeah, that's why I think you know more often than not, there's that tough pocket. Got that inside English on it, though. Oh, boy. <laughs> you know, more often than not, you have to consider the table itself giving you some defense, you know, so it gives you another option on some shots to, hey, let him see the ball. Mm -hmm. And where can I make things, pecu you know, peculiar in that manner? You can already see the wear on the cloth, too. It's oh, starting yeah. to come into effect. It was super slick the first day. That might have dripped in there, but that one didn't even come close. It's got to go. Well, he's okay with a foul here, I think, is his mind. He just didn't want to open it. Look at that shot. Oh, great hit. This ball got a little funny. It, real funny. I don't think he can make it. He might be able to go three rails, though. Around the balls. He's got to just get by the 10. Watch out for this ball might hop a little. Oh, he yeah, decided he to play the it. safety. Two rail kick here. Shane might try and make this, in the, or may end up making this in the side. The key to this one again, to get inside there first off, mm -hmm. and to control. This has got to be on the lighter side. You don't want to get the three all the way to the end rail. Just think to yourself a little past the side here. If you try to get in there, you might you might cut the three first, or you might lose the cue ball a little bit. See how he caught the three on yeah. the way in. Yep. He's going he's gonna to be okay, though. Well, maybe not. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. Yeah. I hope Shaw has a hint of an angle so we can see him power up <laughs> I and know go it. over. Right? I do, too. Uh, here's a great look at where he kind of settles in midway down or two-thirds of the way down. You'll see him stop for a moment and then settle in. Eyes, 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 stop. Eyes, 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 and then go. Yeah, and it's almost a trigger for, like, rhythm. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. a, like a trigger point as well. He almost got it over there. <laughs> wow. He had to really whack it in there. This has been by far the most entertaining match that we've had. And we've had some darn good ones. But this one has had a lot more decision making and, a, and great execution. Even that shot falling short of the position. You had to make a world class stroke to hit that ball like that. Well that and... Um We've had a variety of shots that don't come up that often in, in, you know, just a few games, it seems like. If he's got the bank here, if he got a look at this, he's going to go. Now, if he's just got an edge, he's, he's, he'll have to chop it and try and run behind the six, maybe just naturally one rail, using the second soft rail there. But 
He cues downward. You know he's shooting at it. Uh, it looks like he, he's not playing it. Uh, he was trying to kick behind it. That was hard, right? Might no, I think space. he was trying to, Yeah, maybe. I don't think he was trying to kick behind it. And mm. Like what he did, run the cue ball up table maybe? Yeah. Or here's another one. I think Shane, uh, Shane Shaw is very, very straight here on the four. He sure is. Here from the overhead. See that clearly. May have to manipulate the pocket just a little bit. He may be rolling this going forward. Uh, see ya. That's how difficult that shot was. He was trying to stun forward to short side. That's how straight it was. Boy, oh boy. So this game had a lot of different things. Even that was a good shot. Heck I mean, yeah. You, know, he, and it you got to gamble stopped. in this sport, right? Yeah, well, yeah. You had to do there. Yeah, interesting, and that's a little preference from there. I might have rolled it if I had to uh, mm -hmm. If I had to play that shorter side. Yeah. But, I mean, like I said, it's a lot of preference in those situations. And if you remember Shaw's game, he kind of likes that. Oh, a hundred percent. Going through, yeah, so yeah. where you and I might prefer to roll it, he might like to use a little bit, get through the ball, stroke. Is he better. edging the eight here? Looks like he's just bumping it, you yeah. know, just bumping it forward. Got a little off angle, so a little top English, or he could draw it. Should end up about where he's standing over there by the side pocket. Oh, well, this is. I don't perfect. know if he. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Very nice. <laughs> Tremendous match going on what here. A lot of back Center and stage five four. And Van, Van Boney. Glad to have Alan Oliver tuned in. Stay in the lead. Five St. games Louis, to four. Q, but Jason Kansas. Shaw will be breaking in rack ten. Jim Henry and Big Time Billiards, Spring, Texas, just off of forty five. You've been oh, there. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Man, they got some pool fans there. Big room, been there a long time now. Well, I say a long time, probably uh, 15 years or so, maybe longer, I guess, maybe. All the way from St. Louis, we have Howard and Gail Holtzman here. Yeah, Jim comes here. He's a regular. Oh, yeah, I met him this morning. Oh, first time you ever met him? Uh, we probably met somewhere yeah. along the way, but anyway. He's a cool guy, and I love it that his whole pool room are watching. Shout out to Big Time Billiards. Yeah, that's better connection there from Shaw. <laughs> and the four ball got right in the way, it looks like. Yeah, he'll play a little crossover shot here. He's got a piece of the one. No kiss really to worry about. Now, does he try to just simply use the four? That's a little easier shot and not as much risk. Or does he try to cross it over and come behind the eight? And then get the bridge out to do whatever it is. Another one that plays lefty and uses the bridge righty. Hmm. That's most interesting. I uh, tried to get behind the eight, so that, of course, he's going to play the one with enough speed to make things difficult, but is going to give a bit, little bit of a look. What about the one seven? Is that <laughs> Shane's examining the yeah. long ways away, and the balls are an inch and a half apart? So it's certainly uh, not a dead shot. Yeah, he's looking at uh, having to run the cue ball here off the left side of the one, I think. And that's a little dangerous because the seven's going to catch the one's going to catch the seven. The one's going to go towards the nine. They're hitting it full and kind of banking the one. It's too much cut. Uh, trying to bank the one and go underneath the six or something like that. This is a touchy situation. I think he's got to just take the chance of cutting on the left side of the one and run the cue ball. May end up behind the eight. That's the shot I thought was hard to, to get it, all of what you wanted. Just because you had to cut the one so much. Hard to keep the speed on the one that you want, and the cue ball is going to get turned loose a little bit. He got the most out of it. He oh, had to I use agree. that speed to get I the agree. one down there where it's tough. But yeah, it was boy, everything was bad that time. Oh, this one's gonna hang or go in rather. <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me. Great shot. 
Yeah, and the one impressive thing from all these guys, well, the one, there's many, but another impressive thing, rather, is how they control the object ball so well. It's not something, you, again, you practice very often. Not something you pay attention to most shots mm -hmm. because, you know, it's all about the cue ball and as long as you make the object ball. Rare open miss there from Shaw. Well, he was trying to help the cue ball get a little more speed, get down here, and he then, you know, you instinctively overcut it. Is Shane trying to warp around here? No, he's got to be hitting this light, it? just going into the seven or killing over between there. Okay, yeah. he was able. And he's got to spin the ball here, and this is where you got to kind of use the bed a little more because you need the left English to really take. If you overhit a little bit, it doesn't take as much. Well, and you're into the eight ball pretty easily, too. Oh, he hit that way full. Yeah, there was not a good final trend. Uh, he didn't look committed. You know, it kind of just went off in his hand that time. He didn't have that pause where he was really locked into it. Yeah. And the funny thing with Shane, you know, it's partly technique, but he'll put spin on the ball if he's hitting it firm. You know, like more often when he's hitting it, oh, wow. He's he raised his hand like that ball kicked. I don't know if you noticed what he did there. But kind of making a reference about the chalk, I think. But what I was getting at, Shane doesn't use ex like more tip position when he's hitting the ball lighter. He just doesn't. Uh, he'll use a lot less tip position than a lot of players and use a little bit of a hit of the cue ball to kind of make the line on the cue ball. Tough shot here, Jeremy. Yeah, Looks yeah. like nothing. But <laughs> yeah. Super tough shot. <laughs> the 10 footer extracting a toll, <laughs> revealing just how tough this sport really is, with the, even at the highest level. Yeah, don't know how much of this. It looks like he may be able to get straight at it to bang it around. He might make this three in the side. I think he was giving it a go, to be honest mm -hmm. with you. Yeah. Audience recognized that he was playing a two-way shot. Shane's got a mass A to make a hit. He doesn't like that idea because there's no pace. It's not bad, though, with the eight there, the mass A, in my opinion. Because if, if you feel like you can hit mm -hmm. it full, your cue ball is going to continue downward, right? So I think the other good shot's three rails. Behind here. it, yeah. Oh, he went one rail. That's going to work out good. When you hit him solid, I'll tell you what, it usually uh, pays the biggest dividends. Here we get a good look as Jason will be looking right down the line. This eye pattern thing that we're talking about for extreme accuracy. So aiming, chin's right on the line, checking, set, confirm, and then just a little lower there at the end. Good shot. Eagle Eye. One year he brought this table to the to its absolute knees. Just overpowered the ten footer. I'd never seen anything like it. This shot is a little funny coming across the line, and the main reason why, or one of the reasons, is the eight being pinned way back down. So it's very important. He may end up playing the seven nine combo here. He's he's kind of surveyed the seven if it goes, but. This is a funny one coming across the line, I think, to play the seven in the same pocket as the six. So you see the combo, if you're a little comfortable, the seven kind of goes towards the eight a little. Yeah, the deal is the cue ball goes the other way on this yeah, one. Yeah, it's not much, though, because he's not going to hit it hard, right? Right. He's going to roll it, I think. So. Oh, he could play the seven in the side even better. That makes life a lot easier. Although he did get very straight here. Dead straight. I'm dead on the <laughs> line of this. He's not going to be happy about that. He, he better be happy he's off the rail with the cue ball at least a few inches. Oof. Yeah, he's Power got Power up and draw. And yeah, and, and if he tries across. to swing out for the side, I think he's going to have an issue. If he try, if he just takes the nine in the corner, I think he's going to get out. Like like this. Good this decision. is okay. Yeah. yeah, trying to do too much, and that would 
cost you on this table. So. And he got the most out of that, I'll tell you. Aiming, set. Now it goes just a little bit lower right there. Oh, my goodness. Hit that, that good, too. Yeah. That didn't graze the rail on the way in, but hit inside the ear, but four and an eighth inch pockets. That changes our score quite a bit. Rail first, huh? He's got to catch this pretty thin. And he did. You Gorgeous see that, shot. though. It's not it, right into position too imagine quickly. Imagine two balls. One's hanging. The other one's on the spot. And it's hard to get position. You know what I mean? <laughs> well, you know, it just makes you pay attention extra. But you, you know? see my point. Okay, you you got to go rail first. Oh, you know, boy. You, that tells you, you how hard right pool 11. is. 6-4 is our score. Great match. Yeah, a few little mistakes here in the middle, but I bet both players cleaned that up. Shout out to uh, some of my friends back in St. Louis, part of U.S. Team Billiards. They're having a tailgate party. It's Dan and Kerry Kerner and Mike and Misty Schutzius and probably some other friends. We're cheering for you from here. Glad you're along. Uh, Shaw's dropped a little bit on that TPA, 754. Shane maintaining in the mid-800s. See Julian right there, hard-working Julian. Oh, yeah, he's a man. To the right of yeah. Jason. Yeah, that's that pop he wants. Look how far he flew that one back, huh? <laughs> oh, wow. I like that break. You think? To get a little thin here, too, he may... It's where it's hard for us to tell, you know... Mm -hmm. Half inch makes such a huge difference, but he may have to use the five a little bit here. Whether he comes right into it, as he just, or if he comes to the back rail behind it, oh, he he hit it, used every bit of the pocket. What sure a shot! Did. Boy, that cue ball got good. Now this is a similar shot to what I was saying was tough on the last rack, but not even close in terms of difficulty, because <laughs> now he's got control. He's a little bit closer than it was in the last rack, and it's a little bit less thin. And that's the transition that I'd like to see him shoot every shot with, to be honest with you. It's just hard to do, but I agree. Eh, I don't know. I mean... Well, you get your adrenaline flowing and get your... You <clears> yeah, it's not going to be exactly, but I'm saying attempt that. Like, a lot of times, he's not even attempting that tempo. He wants the faster tempo. Um, and, not, you know, everyone's different, right? But, like I said, I watched that match the other day, and I watched it twice. And it was amazing, even when he needed power, how good the backswing was. You yeah. know, it's easy to get quick whenever we need power. But This is that little flat. He made it look easy. Yeah, I don't know if he can go forward. Yeah, you see that that, that shake of the head oh, there. Yeah. He's, go, he's, he's off angle going right into the 10. He's going to stun it about eight inches forward then and just take it, not even try to be cute and go past the 10 and back up if it's that straight. Yeah, he's just going to roll, like you said, just a little bit forward, trying to lessen the angle. Just a touch. Oh, he went all the way to straight. Okay. That way he can stop his ball. So remember the six he missed on the opposite long rail a couple games ago. Very similar situation here. Let's see if he can hit it just a little cleaner. And this is the tight pocket on the table, too, if they're all tight. But this is the tightest pocket. He's rolling it. Yeah, I don't... And I wonder if that shot he had and that on the six ball where he shot it a little more trying to stop his ball made him roll that one. Because I thought, you know, being able to cue it, he would just hit a little stop shot there. Eagle eye. <laughs> He's, the eagle eye spotted the imperfection on the object ball that he wants cleaned. Well, it seemed he was a little upset about mm -hmm. that, that the ball kicked on him, he felt like. and. I guess he's going super thin then. Oh, yeah. 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 And he's going to hit it lightly. That way he doesn't. He has the cue ball up by the uh, side pocket there. Oh, he, he was able. Yeah, that wasn't as thin as I thought. No, it was wasn't even near as thin, I mean, huh? He did it with control. I was thinking he was going to have to really. He should get back on the board and breaking what will be game number 12. 
All right, six five. And Shaw gets one back. Yeah, Just interesting decision for some of these players. You know, that Shaw shows you how much they breaking. love the Derby uh, to come here and grueling tournament. You know, even it even if it is so great, right? Right mm -hmm. before the World Nine Ball Championships. Shaw looks like he's going to take a timeout. All right, Jason Shaw's back. The good thing with the rankings and stuff, the way they're looking and the and the shape of the t so many events, you're going to start to talk, be talked about. You know, if you're finishing the year in the top ten on points and stuff like that. Oh, and now that Matchroom has points here, oh, I mean, yeah. it's powerful. Well, just like for the cam sport. just like the camel, right? We had yeah. that bonus at the end. You oh, kept track of what you were class. doing. Yeah, absolutely. That was fantastic. What they did. Yeah, here comes Shaw. Back on serve, six to five, with Shaw breaking here in game number twelve. Got a little more pop, but you see he doesn't possess that flying it past the side, really to take those side pockets out mm -hmm. of play. Three that, balls tangled up on the eight. He has a shot at the one, but not a great shot. Certainly not much he can do with the three with his shot. Yeah, and there's a kiss shot on the eight, but not much of one. I'll tell From you. distance, tight pockets and this may be where he just floats the one across trying to go forward using the nine. Just because anything else coming backwards off the one, mm -hmm. I think is pretty dangerous. You're not where you cut the one to, basically, if you're coming to, you know, by the five, six with the cue ball. Mm -hmm. no, he's got to get there. It's he's got to nice get there. Decision. Yeah, it was all execution, though, going to a bare ball. Really nice, though. And this word, I don't think you should rip at it myself. Lose a little accuracy. And, of course, you don't want to baby it, but just, you know, a little lighter and medium mm -hmm. kind of roll in your ball. Well, you run the risk of ripping out the three if you go ripping at it. A oh, real solid hit. Man, a real good result. <laughs> Pays to hit him, Mark. You're, you're going to get a backdoor safety 20% of the time if you just hit it. Okay, watch out for the scratch if he hits uh, what would be the side of the one standing closest to where he's at. Watch for that scratch in the side. That's kind of where you aim because you hate to whiff it on the long side, right? What a shot that was. Man, these guys. What a shot. All right, here's the one on the side that does play. It's tough. But the 3-8's not a terrible shot. The only thing is you're not going to really be able to hold the three much. Yeah, the question, you're probably not even going to try to run out from here. You might make the one to get positioned to play safe on the three, and it might be that kick and stick type of a thing. Oh, he got across nicely, so now he can stun it away, putting him underneath the eight, right? He might even think he can cut the three. I, oh, maybe I, maybe he can. But be, he, he's kind of aggressive, no? I think it's he's playing play the, safe. underneath yeah. the seven or the eight, whichever one you like. No jump cues. This is much more powerful now. Wow. That's powerful even if you have jump cues. Yeah. But you know what I mean. You don't yeah. you, The simple safety, I'm saying, not necessarily just that shot itself, but those sim more simple, close to your work. Mm -hmm. Long time with the jump cues, these guys are always trying to get separation. So they'll pass on some shots because yeah. if they don't get him nestled up behind the ball, right, they're going to leave more of a return. Right. All right, Shaw's going to have to just rely on the impact here. Yeah, he's so good with the speed. Oh, my. And that's whenever you're close to the rail there, putting that top, it spreads even more for some reason. If he's another six, seven inches away from the rail shooting that type of shot, it actually doesn't spread quite as much. I'm not sure why that is, Mark, because you don't fall through as much. I don't, I don't know because you're close to it, so. Because normally Jason judges those real well. Yeah, he missed that by a good bit. I was shocked. I thought he was going to hit it for sure. I just didn't know how it was going to turn out. But. All right. I don't recall Jason having a lead in this match so far. Now a chance to stretch it out to two games again for Shane. 
know, Shane started the match with a break and run. Like I said, I don't think uh, Shaw's had the lead so far. Shane's crafting through this. And what's that two game lead back here? As we cross the midpoint of the match. And these fans know that this is a, a bit of a rivalry here between Shane and Shaw. Yeah. No doubt about it. Van Boning now. Seven. And Van Boning. Five. Stins his lead to two now. Seven games to five. And he'll have the break. You have the rest of the schedule for our spectators? You know what? That's a good point. I, I do. I know Fetter Gorse is in the next match at 3.30. It's Gorse and Gomez, That's I right. know. And then, because I'm tired, I'm going to look it up because... Make a mistake, but I do have her yeah, written down. It's Isn't for, it, is it, and uh, Corteza, yeah, and then it's Yashishin uh, and Filler. Filler, okay. Well, then I won't have to look at these. That. Are the money matches, yeah, <laughs> and to continue and get more money or the chance at more money? Our good friend uh, Danny DiLiberto says two thousand dollars that will buy lunch in Paris. A dry break, it looked like. I didn't see anything down. And he's surrendered a shot on the one, I believe, anyways. First time in the match, I remember Shane breaking dry. Yeah. I don't know if he has a shot, an offensive shot or not. I think he does. He doesn't look too happy about it, that being Jason. So maybe he has to edge the one, actually, and play a safety. Now, he's got a lot of cover with the three there as far as uh, not giving up. A direct shot and a nice hit there on the one. All right. We'll see. Is he thinking about curving at this ball? Maybe he has a little sliver of the one. Definitely can go between the 2 8 to the top rail and get at the one with the kick shot. This is where, if you feel good about it, curving it, and that's what he's doing. He wants to hit it full and bank it around, let the cue ball go towards the three. See that Man. right there? World class. And that, you know, not only is nine ball, but that's a little more of that one pocket kind of visualizing some things going through the ball. And Shane, uh, Shane has played a little bit of that lately. That was a superb shot. Yeah. Uh, it's going to spread. Man. It's going to spread. Yeah, it is. We talk about the Moscone so often that it's so commonly missed that shot. It's amazing, really. So what would look like a three-game lead and would huge lead in this match between two great players. Tough out, though. Got a lot of work. So he'll draw in the position here. Shot really is going to be the four to the five, getting proper on that to make things a little easier from the six to the seven. Mm hmm. Not and the, a, then the three to the four, too. That's yeah, I think he'll draw off of the three. It's not too terrible. And that one rail angle off the four going to where he's standing now and across is pretty nice to get off the five. Oh, he's trying to tear something out? No. Okay. He wanted this angle on the three, so he didn't yeah. have to deal with the nine. At all. I thought he could just draw back getting that angle, just not be as close to it maybe. But, yeah, this is perfect here. Like I said, he can come off, off the rail and get that little one rail angle to come across off the four to the five. If you get just right on the five, you can lighten up the load on the seven by moving it up by the side pocket from the five. That will make the, uh-oh. Yeah, you got way too much. You got a little flat there. Way too much. Yeah, this has gotten odd, hmm. very odd. And the five ten is not terrible. I mean, it could stun draw down there, but it looks pretty thin. 
Yeah, if you tried to wow, stun it, that was a big across, mistake from a simple uh, it was, position. Yeah, he got in the right place and then he overdid it. Ah, oh, good. Just the way I do it, I punish myself by <clears throat> making myself play the same thing that's not there now. Well, that was probably the best option he still had. Okay. Yeah, he's still thinking about that shot. How do I miss position so easily on that three? Or on that four to get to the five. He's looking at the ten. I think a high ball, he, the ten hits the bottom rail. It does. That's why he's looking at way over cutting the five. Well, not well, now. I he's going to draw back off the ten. Yeah, he's trying to figure out how to get position, really. Uh-oh. It's going to go pretty hard. Treacherous shot here. Yeah. This is not comfortable because you know you're never getting a, a great position play from this. Watch this little takeaway because he's rolling it in a little bitty hit. Yeah. That's oh, how, what a shot. That's what he, a shot. That's how he likes to shoot him a little more. <laughs> now he's got to go to a half a pocket with the eight on a long, tough down the rail seven. The overhead tells me no pocket on the eight. He's looking at the bank or the end of the side. I think that's the, the right shot. He can go forward and let just a little bit of an angle get the cue ball off the rail. He doesn't have to try and force the cue ball off the rail. Go all the way up. You get the most off the rail. You can. Yeah, beautiful. Beautiful. Man. Really aggressive. Nice. He committed. You know, you can see he was dialed in on getting that ball down no matter what happens here. Now he's right on the fence. Not the easiest. If it was a hanger to put him behind the nine, he would because he's mm. off angle, but it's not. It's not a hanger to put him behind the nine. He has to kind of put a little left spin, maybe swerve into the ball ever so slightly. I think he maybe goes here. I can't blame him because it's – are you going to come back to the table with a better shot? Because even if you get a lockdown safety, Jason's going to hit some balls here. He's not going to always miss kicks. I think it's hard to get the lockdown safety, to be honest that with too. you. Yeah, that's, right. that, that, I mean, it could happen, but I don't I don't think he feels very secure about, about it happening, right? So I think he does shoot at this. The key to this is just like medium, it looks like to me. Not too heavy, not too light, unless you're going to follow your cue ball. But if you're hitting down, just medium stroke. Sweet, sweet. Oh, what a shot. Sweet. What a shot. And don't, don't overlook this one after a great shot. You know how that is, Mark. This is no hanger. And he knows this is a big difference if he can get this ball down. Three-game lead versus a one-game lead. Yeah, what an out. Nice Swish. shot. Yeah. Eight five There's some nice now. shooting there good from pressure. the South Dakota good kid. On the and he opens up a three-game uh, lead once again. That's probably going to be my best Eight chance to, to win this rack, despite that it's an off-angle bank. We'll have I can win with it. Yeah. Well, the thing is, he went through his deliberation of uh, of how good is the safety, mm -hmm. how much, you know, it's not an easy safety as far as just to automatically lock him up. So you weigh your options. and Well, how about this? The safety is just as hard as making the bank. Yeah, pretty close. You know, you pre know pre I mean, pretty, yeah, pretty close. I mean, you know. I think pretty about about even money, right? So you so. got you got to manufacture either one. You might as well manufacture a win or go for it. Absolutely, yeah. And like you always say, there's that backdoor twenty percent. So, oh, that was losing in the side. Nice kiss there. Not, nothing down though. No, this is you can see he's getting some ball action, but he's not catching that same thing that square hit like Shane is generally. Yeah, that two ball. Uh, Saved probably the match for him right there. If that ball didn't come in the way at the last second, Shane, after a nice out, probably does some damage here with a shot at the one. And hmm. Yeah, yeah. You hate to put have to push out from here. That's not easy. No, if he had any pocket on the two, he may swerve to try and play the rail first on the one. Right. But no reward, really. I think he rolls out to a long rail bank on the one, kind of where he's standing at right now. The problem is he can't roll out. He's got to roll out goofy to where the safety's not easy right. either, though. Right. So. Like, just enough to where the cut isn't really playable. 
and just enough to where it's not easy to swing off the right side and a beautiful speed with the cue ball. If he gives up the bottom of the ball and what is more of the side of the ball, Yeah, this could be trouble for, for, for Shane. Man, what do you do, though? I mean, you just bank it away, and you float in between the 7-2, kind of over behind the 8-2, little high right ball. The thing is, again, okay. go yeah. slowly into that position. You can't try to race over there. You'll lose it. Yeah. He's using the He's 6. He's trying to thin wow, it. Wow, what a hit. That is too good, sir. <laughs> Eagle eye. Yeah. Talk about one heck of a shot under the pressure as well. It certainly tipped the scale of the balls towards Shaw's favor now from Van Boning's favor. Yeah, and the side pocket's right in the way of the natural path to kick two rails behind this. That's what he wants to do with the three there. It could fluke the three. At this speed, you're never getting separation. Yeah. Probably as good as it could have turned out, though, and the two still tangled up on the eight. Well, I wonder if he goes here. I mean, he's not because he's shooting quickly, but there is a big pocket on the one, and he could use the three to hold the cue ball for the two. So, prudent play here, though. But you know how it is some some mm -hmm. matches you play, right? And you're like, Phew, I haven't won with a safety yet. <laughs> you know, this guy keeps kicking yeah. out of it. But you got to stick to it, I guess. This again right before the side. You know, he's looking at that angle, but I wonder why. Three rail? Can't, no, I'm, well, that too, but what about one rail just off to the, you know. That's what he's doing. No, I meant one rail off the end rail, you know, one between the two and the nine to the end. I oh, he's a good hit. It's a good hit. Uh, Eagle Eye is uh, protesting that it wasn't, but I think, like you, just based uh, on the cue ball reaction, well, the, it was a good hit. He hit, the, he hit the one, and what happened was the one caught the four quickly and went backwards, so it made it look like it was mm -hmm. a thin hit hitting the ten first, but I don't think so. I think it was a good hit on the one. They're going to rewind it. Might as well use the technology, right? All right. It appeared, well, it appeared, it was close, but it appeared good to me. It's got a nice angle here, not a ton, but for him, the stun draw up for the two on the side. Really hard to get bad on the two. And the good thing for him, no pressure because he's got a huge pocket. Wow, he's going to end up getting a little where he's got to draw, but he's got a huge pocket on the three. So it's not like he's got to get perfect on the three, mm -hmm. right? He can just draw out to the center and cut it pretty easily. A little past center, maybe. That's why I thought digging in on the cue ball here, I thought maybe not on the one. but Oh, wow. What a pretty shot. Yeah. And now he may use that five a little bit. The problem is if you have to use the five, you're, re you know, you're moving it around somewhere, right? You can draw off the end rail. Yeah, that's true, too. Just yeah. draw and just go into the end rail with a three like that and then use the five in that fashion to liberate yeah. the cue ball from that end rail down there. Well, it worked out. The five got in a pretty sweet spot. It did. And it could creep a little bit more up by the nine and things become very difficult. Now, this is where Shaw plays that little small, small drag of the ball sometimes on these shots. He may just go ahead and run it. Use the seven, maybe. I don't know. Yeah, I like that. I thought he might use the seven. Mm -hmm. Now we get to see a little half mass A over here. And the eight's there too, Mark. So, I mean, he's got a little concern still. Nice shot. Two cushions. Nice. Well, I think he was playing for the side, and I don't know that he got there. Yeah, he did, but he's going to have to go backside the nine, I think, off of three cushions here. I don't think he's thick enough to be able to kill it with a little inside using the long rail, end rail. 
think he's got to run this. Uh, try to play the eight a little bit thin side of the pocket. And just remember, coasting to that position behind the nine, that's the key. He's, well, he's not, short. Yeah, he's short. And he's going to have to play a thin one. Could make the nine as well, uh, the ten as well. Wow. Pretty, pretty shot. <laughs> Eagle eye scrambled through this rack very nicely. Eight six is our score now. Well, some nice cutting there from Shaw, the Eagle Eye. We got our good pool we fan friends down in match. Tucson. Doug Preston tuned in. Eight and six. Jason, uh, Jason the grabbed the. I want to thank a few of our sponsors so much. Shane had won the lag. Also, Mez Hughes, Simone Claw. This is a mistake. Aramith it should be addressed by Ricky. And to be the break with you. demon. This is not correct. Shane appears to recognize that. Yeah. I think it should be addressed when you have a referee in the match. Myself. You know, the outer tables, things happen where the guys, you know, get confused. Mm -hmm. and you try to do your best to remedy the situation. Mm -hmm. But but when a referee is calling the match, I, I think uh, he should definitely get in, involved in there to keep it right. No question about it. Yeah. Otherwise, what's the purpose? You yeah, know, you're yeah, just yeah. taking up space and once in a great while. So Well, you know. You want things it's easy to, to go. Yeah, go ahead, Mark. I'm sorry. I, no, I'm just saying you want things to go proper. Yeah, and, Absolutely. And it's easy when you're competing to have an oversight because you're concentrating on what you're doing, not the semantics of running the event. Let's see if he can keep a little less top English off of it. <laughs> Look at this break. Good. Yeah, this is going to – should extend that lead back wow. to three games. Uh, well, you only made two. Excuse me, I – my bottle of water up here in the booth had me <laughs> snookered on the six ball right there, so I thought he made three, but nevertheless, still, it's a ten footer. He's got to, he's got to work, right? Oh, he died. He hit a little bit thicker than he wanted to, so now he's got to yeah. make a good shot. It's not that it's a hard shot. And had Shaw left him this, he'd make it every time. But psychologically, you know, you should have been a little better, and so sometimes this ball plays tougher, just because you know you should have been a little bit closer, another foot or so. Yeah, really nice getting by the six there. You saw him just cut the three a little to the right side of the pocket. Good recovery. Super light speed to preserve the angle that he wanted on the six rather than try to get closer to the six. Yeah, that's where if he's coming around, he's got to, you know, have speed right, angle right, or it could work very difficult getting on the eight. We'll see. Now, he's done real well, but he's going to be a little straight. So. But so close to the seven, that's yeah. what he wanted. Yeah, he maintained it real well there. Mm -hmm. That's easy to overhit coming around. It's That's one of those in-between shots. If you don't play all the time, you're not going to engage those angles and speed just right. Big draw stroke, couple rails coming back at the eight. Perfect speed here. This is going to float nicely. Oh, gorgeous shot. <laughs> Beautiful to watch. Once they hit that first rail, they accelerate because he had a little bit of left side spin to it. Yeah, real straight, so getting the cue ball away from the side cushion is not a possibility, so he's just going to cinch the angle so it naturally traverses back towards the 10 here. Yeah, this is that one in the middle that, you know, it's just a funny shot. It's, of course, lays right in front of you, but... You know, it's a light speed, really. Good pause at the cue ball. Good connection. Yeah, didn't, gui didn't guide it either, right? Nice mm -hmm. stroke. Yeah, beautiful to watch. 
And now back to that three-game lead, it appears. No, it's a lifetime of commitment to make all those shots like and that. And another break and run and from beautiful. Shane Van Boning. Third break and Aging run closer the to the thus finish far line, for nine, Shane six. Van Boning. And Eli that's the difference in the match, 9-6. Here's Chris Salvo, <laughs> former Lindenwood star player. He's got some pan-seared ribeye, <laughs> rice, caramelized onions, and he's watching pool. <laughs> what a cool dude. Uh, Jeremy and I will be over if we get dismissed from this yeah, job, right. by the way, Chris. <laughs> well, a little, little Bigfoot, right? Some Sunday playoffs he's probably got on another TV coming up. Life's good. Yeah. Amen to that. All right. Ooh, awful kiss on the cue ball. I don't think anything's down, though, so it's not going to hurt that bad for Jason. I think Shane is a little bit snookered, maybe. Maybe not. Maybe he's got a little more look on the one than I, I thought he did. And that camera tells me maybe he's snookered. It's, this is where you got to look and see how difficult the rack is. What's helping me here on this rollout? Uh, it's a nice idea what Shane's got going on here because he knows that Jace is not going to want to force Shane to try to kick and stick and lodge the cue ball into the 5-8, but then it's hard to do. And when you're behind, it's not a fun shot to shoot to hope to get safe. It's easier for Shane because he's forced to play. Yeah, this is – oh, he put, went the lighter side. It's a little surprising to me. But good. Great effect. Yeah. But normally these guys will kick out of this pretty decently with so many balls on the table early in the rack. You know, later in the rack, a few mm -hmm. balls are gone and whatnot. But there was a path there to go three rails in between the three seven with a lot of cover. High left English here, Jeremy, to try to bring the cue ball. No, uh, he went the other way. Well, he was okay. trying to get two underneath it, I think. And, uh, okay. And uh, what you were saying, Mark was saying, a little reverse, trying to bring the cue ball back towards this, this uh, top rail which it has a lot of value. We had that shot, was it yesterday? Someone yeah. played a nice one. Jesus Atencio, maybe it was. Maybe it was filler. Eagle Eye looking at back cutting the one to the far corner pocket down there past the 10. Whew. Man, it's just thin. I don't know if he, I don't know if I pulled the trigger here. I may have to go at the kick. Wow, he's curving? Wow, the late curve around the four to get right at the, one. Oh, wow. he hit it good, too. I know. Why? But how distance. good is that, though? Oh, my. It's one thing to curve around yeah. a ball near you, right? Yeah. Because then you kind of pick out where it's going to break and all that, start to curve and all that, right? There, it's just like total feel. I mean, oh. just, just science just gotta, fiction, otherworldly. I mean, yeah. you, who plays that shot? Well, you just got to you gotta trust everything's going to happen. You can't calculate it really at all, I don't think. And I don't think I've ever heard of any really like uh, teachers or, or savvy people really explain the curve shot in detail just because there's so many things going on. Mm -hmm. All right, just he's going to bank this between the 10-4 here. Come across with the cue ball. Yeah. And super good at this kind of stuff as well. Look at his ball speed on the one ball. He lays it right on the end rail. And again, nothing you can calculate. Just complete the stroke. Don't try to don't try to judge it so much. All right, the eight five's in trouble getting broke up here. I, mean, I don't think he hit it. No, he didn't. Surprising to be honest with you. It was now, close. Now Shane can manipulate the eight five if needed. And he kinda needs to, doesn't he, with the way the three's pinned, Mark? Yeah, I think he's going to try to rub that three or yeah. five or eight right here. Even if he glides by and doesn't hit him, he's still okay. He can still defend himself. So well, the center that. of the table, you got to hit these. Even if you put more speed, you got to hit them. Oh, boy. Yeah. Dandy shot. The oh, whole rest of the rack plays good now. Just kill the ball. Take a little cut shot on the three. This is where, again, he'll use a little more of the pocket than a lot more right English, you know? Mm -hmm. Or a lot of guys would use right English there to cut the, to kill the ball. 
And maybe the more space on the 10 footer mark that we talk about allows him to do that a little more than having to kill it with the English. Yeah. Oh, really nice. Really nice. That was that good transition you were talking about. Yeah. From backswing to forswing. He had the nice timing and tempo on that uh, tenuous shot, the nervy shot. And usually when Shane, I think his best tempo is there, he has the smallest pause in the back when he has his best tempo. He still has a pause in the back, but it's not mm -hmm. real abrupt, you might say, you know, kind of like, uh, like very noticeable. Yeah. Yeah, you don't need a prolonged pause at the back, but you have to transition into the four swing, so it's like a child on a swing gliding up. You don't sure. see it really change. It just falls. And that's when, that's when your tip is the most accurate, when you get that tempo. He's a little hot there. He wanted to draw that another about four or five inches. Mm -hmm. That way he has a natural one rail angle. Gets up on his tiptoes. Yeah, going forward it looks like. That's perfect. Boy, he's playing good. stroke there as mm -hmm. well and the thing is when you keep putting them in on the on the easier shots you, it just gets easier and easier to to do it on the tough shots keep that good fluid stroke the hill. on the hill at He's 10 on the to hill. 6 this is our first match of day three From of the big the foot final yeah. four. Ten games it's certainly to six. been a great one so and far he'll be breaking with a chance to move on <laughs> yeah, to that I was final four forward to this yesterday when i saw i was like okay here we go rock and roll juice fire burn and desire can that wait? This this match, this singular match, I would drive from St. Louis to Louisville and home after watching one match there you and go. feel like I totally got my money's worth out of this. A little snow on the ground <laughs> yeah. out there today. It snowed in, in the early AM and then a little rain after. I know it. I was gonna go out and get some toothpaste and some other things and I thought, yeah, I think I'll wait till tomorrow. Right. <laughs> Forget this down the highway of death out here. Might really unload a little more on this one. See that? <laughs> yes, See that? Did. Yeah. He's like an old workhorse that sees the barn at the end of the day. You know, you can see that, hey, I could put this thing away right here. Yeah. Well, I, you know, I've been around him, and I see Shane kind of transition in things when he's thinking about, you know, he wants to have that just mm -hmm. in case later on in the tournament, you know, so... He wants that option just in case things go awry a little bit on the other break. Yeah. Is he looking at, you know, planning to play the cross side bank? Because he was kind of looking at the side pocket there to see. He's got to play the cross side. Okay. So he will play for position on the three. Cross well, what side. he's looking at now is, I think anyways, he, what he was looking at maybe playing the two off the rail, off the five, because mm -hmm. that holds him on the three perfectly right. right now instead of shooting the combo first. So... Yeah, this is a pretty heady thought right here. Yeah, and see how that holds the position on the yeah. five very nicely. Now he can use the seven to not only hold the cue ball, but just kind of make sure a little more room on the five. Yeah. So a high left ball here, about medium speed. Not a lot of left, just a little bit. I don't like ripping this one, Mark. Like I said, like a medium speed. Uh, he played it more with stun to try and get into the back of that ball. Eagle Eye with a 210 combo. <laughs> this will be a pretty one. It's long and off angle. And this is just the kind of uh, combination that Jason connects on. I think the three goes, though, no? Does it? Is it tight, well, maybe, by it or maybe not? Maybe yeah, I'm not. looking maybe at the not. overhead. Let's see what Jason He's going to bank the three. He's banking the three. That's why he moved the chalk, I think. He's got to hit the numbers in a few ways anyways, down 10 to 6, alternate break. So I think he's banking it. He feels like he's going to run out this rack if he connects on the bank. I don't know. Oh, he, he played the, the combo. combo. 
it's easy to say after the fact, but he didn't look committed to that shot to me. Just you know, it was kind of hasty. Almost like the, the wind was knocked out of him a little bit yeah. from the way a few things went in this match, right? So, and he hadn't played a bad match. What happened if you look back at this match is, is he didn't get a lot out of his safeties overall. Not saying he he performed the safety. Just Shane made a lot of nice. Uh, you know, returns off of his safeties. And the biggest distinction is going to be on the break. Shane broke and ran out three times, and Jason's not been productive from the right. break. Even when he made balls, the things got clumped up. Okay, got to hit this one clean. That way you get all the way out. Yeah, if you overhit a little there, it hugs. And that's what he was worried about right there. He wanted a little more angle. He's going to have to thump this one pretty good to get back. Oh, yeah, he's got this, though. No, but I'm I mean, not saying he doesn't. I'm just saying, but this, yeah. that, he's going to have to power up. Yeah, but get it going. It releases better than you think. That bet is nice. I hit a beauty. That was, like, picture perfect, and that's why I got more, and I was talking about the bet itself. It really does open up nicely. May go cross side here to finish this. I think he cuts it myself, but. Boy, if you cut it, you're going right into the seven. Yeah. Right? Yeah, for sure. He's banking it, though. Again, about medium. There wasn't no medium there, Mark. <laughs> no, that was warp drive. Yeah. Mm. And the funny thing is, that's the problem I thought. You know, medium, you just kind of stop your hold your ball a little bit. He would have had to come with one heck of a shot on the seven, I'll tell you. Stunning. Glide rolled in there. Crucial moment in the match. Yeah, and the nine in the side is no hanger, so and he's got to figure out. Ball's not that handy to get near it either. Yeah, he's going to warp it two rails up above, hit right before the side. Oh, he hit it a little inside English. <laughs> what a shot. Do not think I haven't seen Eagle Eye rally from these type positions before to win the match. Well, the funny thing is, I was thinking of the score line. 10 6 itself. We've had so many incredible comebacks from that number alone. Uh, some of them in Virginia, of course, and yeah. then some of them right here at the Derby City Classic. I think it was uh, JL Chang, where Shane came back from down 10 6. Shaw had a big comeback from down 10 6. Two years in a row, yeah. Big Co from 10 6 behind, yeah. And one year, Big Co never shot again, yeah. You know, and it was incredible. He made some some jump shots. And, uh, Those were winter break formats, though. They were, so, they were so that this, true. That, but this alternate break format, a little tougher, but for some reason, that 10 6 number stands <laughs> out in my head a lot, especially if Shaw's involved. And he's got a lot of fight in him, he gets frustrated at times, but he does not quit. And that might have been the knock on him when he was younger days. When things didn't go his well, way, he was a little bit more willing to capitulate and just like, yeah, this wasn't my match or this isn't my day. Well, he didn't have as much grind in his right. in, in his mentality then, you know, with the safeties and whatnot, you know. It coincided with uh, marrying Era and his daughter, uh, honestly. When I look back at his career, I remember when very young, he'd be over here drinking with the boys till late, and then there was a little bit more rambunctiousness, and now he's become, well, earned my complete respect on and off the table. Oh, much square hit. No Certainly spin was. on that ball. Certainly was. Still don't see balls down, but a better hit for sure. I think he does have a look at the one. I don't know if position play is very doable with the five being there. I think he can't get at the one mark. And the funny thing about these shots, right, mm -hmm. is if you play it with left English, you'd like to spin off the five, but then you're not catching as much of the five. Or if you play it with right, you're catching the right amount of five, but then the cue yeah. ball doesn't want to go anywhere. So usually stick to center in that situation and just take your chances. Oh, I don't, I don't know what happened there. I think he was playing safe. And trying to run the cue right. ball. Right, and I think he uh, 
didn't get enough of it or got too much of it. I don't know which way it was, but I don't think he was playing the offense. Well, the four is ugly, and I'm not sure with the eight, you know, kind of being attached to the four, if he can get out of four ten combo. Good thing is if he can get full on the two, he can play the three up long maybe and try and manufacture something on the four. This is going to be over hit a little bit and going away from the three ball. So first shot, some problems. Nothing major. He can run the rock, but he's got some work. Is he snookered? Oh, he's just stunning across. Why didn't he run that with top left, Mark, and come two rails between the 5-7? Yeah, I guess he felt like it was awkward between the 5-7. I think he was yeah. snuggered a little. Like he had to hit it with center and make it grab a little, you know what I mean, Mark? So Beautiful hit here, which we're becoming more accustomed to from yeah. Shaw, it seems like. But, uh, strange to me. I think maybe he was partially snuckered to where he couldn't put left English because he'll deflect into mm -hmm. that ball, you know? So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, something was uh, askew there. You know, he's such a relaxed player, even even under immense pressure. He, he doesn't back off of his shots. He made his decision. He went with it. Oh, Shane was able to cut that uh, in. I didn't realize that. Me either. I thought he was playing safe behind the six, trying to move the three up the rail a little bit. Well, Does he have anything here? here? Is, a, is he going to play the four off the eight into the ten? I mean, this is treacherously. Uh, this is tough as far as a safety. If if he if he does, he's, he's playing the cue ball primarily. Yeah, he's going to draw the ball back, right, right? Right. And just take his chances at something low percentage. Oh no, he's yeah. hitting something thin here. So I don't know what he's doing. No clue. Just going to try to block the, the four with the ten. Just slightly hold it. Oh no. Oh yeah, what a what okay, a really yeah, nice play there. That's what he was doing. And the thing is, he couldn't draw it too much, uh, or else the four goes through the eight a little more. I mean, it's great. He's fully blocked on the four, so it was well designed and executed. Yeah, Shaw's so good at hitting the Man. right side of the ball on those one railers. Tremendous. And real, and real. Jason's disappointed, but that's all you could do from where he was at. Oh, he left him a pretty doable kick and stick here. Mm hmm. Which is what you'd want to do, I think. The, the four into the nine's okay. You might make the nine, or if you miss hit, the four might come up. So usually kick behind this one. Oh, no, he's banking it down using the nine. Ooh, that's better. It is better, <laughs> it's actually. Better now. Yeah. yeah, that's better. You get a chance to completely obstruct him from the four. I don't think he did that, but. Well, and he may be able to float this past and kind of use the 10 and 8. We'll <laughs> yeah, see. we're going to see another rolling ball shot here. Well, like the six ball he rolled in a few games ago. Remember that shot? Uh, from way down table. from here. Ooh, gorgeous. Got to go. Nope. Did he get a rail? No rail. And Jason's like, I don't know if we got a rail or not. Yeah, definitely no rail, 100%. There was never a bounce off the rail there at all. Hmm. Boy, Jason hit a good ball, though. It was unfortunate it came up uh, maybe a half inch short or a quarter inch short. but Yeah, and that happens a lot on that shot because you're worried about it leaking out, you know, and it just so he can go between the 8 10 here up for the 5. It goes now that the 9 was moved a few shots ago. And he's gotten a little funny. Now he's got to kind of pinch draw it, Mark. Take a little cut on the 6. I think he's okay, though, but yes. It's a little past his mark, but not bad. Yeah, that's a good shot here. And I didn't want to be super straight, but she probably got a little straight. That's just a pool. Pool doesn't go just to where it should go or where you hope it goes. Well, that pinch shot, right? Mm hmm It'll fool you when you hit it good. You'll, like, really cheat the angle to nothing hardly. Like, you know, that angle he had on the five, he probably expected to gain something above the six, right? But when you hit it well, that... That pinch, that straight draw, it almost fools you how powerful it is. All right, he's going to come across now. Ooh, ah, he's not going to like that. <laughs> he's smiling. He knows he hit the wrong part of the pocket with that ball. Yeah, and with the nine so accessible. Yeah, I thought he would just stay there. He could have just stopped it and not even tried to get closer. He's... 
Is he he's, bank for safety cross corner? Is he's, that, oh, uh, like a soft one, double yeah. doubling it more than anything. Oh, boy. Oh. That's not going to be good at all. Everything's wrong. Yeah, except for he got lucky the cue ball froze on the rail at least. But uh, and Shaw won't try to get much out of this. But he could get treacherously straight on the nine. Well, he doesn't need much out of this. And Shaw will be happy to be straight on the nine, even if he, no matter what, he's glad to be back at the table. It was looking like curtains. Rail first? Yep. No, nope. nope. ball, ball first. first. Power. He did get that straight, but he he's did. not on the rail, though. <laughs> he lie. Now, he knows he's going to have to take on a tough cut on the 10, which he's glad to have, but he would have liked something just a hint better. Yeah, a little grimace there. He's like, really? <laughs> yeah. Well, you called it. That's just where it goes. Yeah, and the good thing for him is he stayed aggressive. A lot of guys would just roll the 8 in, not recognizing that straight, and they'd be on the rail with the cue ball. Power draw. Look at oh, this it's shot. It's going to be on top power. of it. It's going to be on top of it. Oh, no, he got him. there. Good shot. Good shot. Hey, look at the stretch he's got here. This is <laughs> this is a no this is no fun. Not at that yeah. range. Uh -oh. Get the bridge, Jason. What a shot though on that nine ball. Yeah, cheat the pocket just enough to Ten create foot. a line on the cue ball and the power to move it. Ten foot table. The tightest pockets we've ever had by far, and he's got to move that cue ball about 14 feet with draw. He's definitely not out of the woods here. This is awkward. He's got to get the cue stick out of the way quickly. He's just getting the extension. He's not even going to use the bridge, okay? Yeah. Well, I think you need the bridge, Jason. Uh, is he going to try and lean over? Wow. <laughs> Nothing to it. I love it. Well, the shot uh, clock was burning, you know. He was I at see. 10 seconds. I, yeah, so. I didn't know how, where we were at with that. I was just watching him. But I, I thought he was measuring. I didn't think he was ready to shoot at all. I just wanted, I thought he was getting a feel. Could I do this from here? And he just let it rip. And I'd like to know why for that shot he took that little extension off. Uh, maybe that was just a little extra one he had on for that trying to reach it. I don't know. You know how some of the guys will take their playing extension off, say they're swerving the ball mm -hmm. or they're jacked up on the rail yeah. sometimes, right? I haven't, don't know enough about that just because I've never really played with the extension for any period of time. All right, maybe unloads again. Just like that. Try break. Three Yellow balls three down. Ball. The one's going to open. The four, I don't know if it has a pocket. It doesn't look like it goes by the eight. Very tight by the ten if it does play. It does play by the ten, I think. Really interesting. You see how much ball action way down table he was still getting where the three ball was going the other direction, got clattered by two balls, kicked back into the corner. Well, the thing is, you know, I think timing is what makes the balls move along with now you have power with great timing, you're going to get even more. Because when the timing's off, I don't know. The power doesn't enter the rack properly. I yeah. Think, something th yeah. Yeah, it's kind of like they hop out of the rack more than run out of the rack. When they run out of the rack, they move a lot. But when they hop out of the template, it's kind of like they're kind of dead a little bit more, right? You see that a lot with the new rules in nine ball. If you don't hit it right, uh, you can get quite a bit of congestion. Uh, he's going to need a little bit of a roll here to get by these, and he did it. Wow, look at there. Didn't mm. touch a thing, Amazing. by the way. Amazing shot. To get straight in. No angle. But with the nine ball rules, like I said, you can get a lot more congestion if your timing's not right on the hit. Like I said, they just kind of hop out of the rack versus run out of the rack. And just for clarifications nine ball rules meaning nine on the break or on the spot with the break box is that what you're talking about yeah 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 okay yeah. or even just yeah nine on the spot period but yeah with the break box you really have okay. to play the cut break right so man what a shot speed wise there what a good place to get yeah this is where i don't try to get for the six in the side i play for the five to stop and just draw my ball off the six but that is a stretch though so maybe the 10 footer Maybe he wants to draw past his five, but then, then he's got to play some nice touchy ones, right? Got to hope he doesn't get too much angle here. Yeah, looks like he overhit it just a hint, but maybe not. I think he can pinch it back and just play the six in the same side. Yeah, that's what he was wanting. 
So looks like he got that then. The cue ball will naturally. Oh my, he dug into that one a lot more than I yeah, thought. Yeah, he was a little worried, I okay. think. And that's what side pockets do when you play that extra ball on the side. It can get funny quickly, Mark. You know, if he gets full on the five, he just stops, shoots a six yeah. in the upper corner, draws the ball back. Really hard to make a mistake. He's, he's good now, but he needs to get on the eight properly to get on the nine with the ten being there. Yeah, he's going to have to draw his ball again. He may not like this angle too much. Now, this is where he needs to draw it. and, and I think he's going to follow. Follow? I don't think he's going to draw. Really? How's it, where's he following to, though? Then he, can he go two rails and just get straight on? The, oh, no, he's drawing. Okay. Or stunning or something. But, hey, straight on the eight is okay. He was trying to get the great angle. This is the one he didn't want. Oh, boy. Yeah. Yeah, this is really tricky now. I'll tell you. And he's, is he <laughs> thin enough to kind of draw off the 10, Mark? That's a lot better than rolling, believe it or not. It, I think rolling a, is dangerous. He's got a 45-degree cut, though, so thin off yeah, the 10. Yeah, soft draw off the 10. Watch. Well, it warps before you get to the 10. See how it does it right there, right? That's a little better than rolling just yes. because you're going to continue to go forward, right? Agreed. So the yeah. thing is, sometimes you get too thick to where you can't play off the 10 um, with control. Called it perfectly, Jeremy. That is exactly what he was able to do. I thought he was a little bit too thin. Uh, is it too thick, the draw was going to take too much, too thin to yeah. avoid the 10. Yeah, that's right. Well, t well, the thing is, if you're too thin, like you were uh, talking about, you catch too much of the 10, right? And what a beautiful shot there to end our match. Big, big shot Essentially, there. anyways. Yeah. That <laughs> will close it out. Breaking the line. Fourth time in the set. He started with one, and he ended with one. Great shoot there by both guys. Pure class. Pure class. And really enjoyed that match. Both Same players here, still Mark. talking. 20 minutes time. We got another one. Great one coming. Yeah. Okay. Couple, couple guys with the G in the last name. Gorston Gomez. <laughs> Well, we'll be looking forward to that one, too. We want to thank everyone for joining us today. That's our time for this time. So long for just a while.